Hello students, this tutorial is about standard deviation and t-test. You already know how to do standard deviation using Excel, but IB will also want you to do at least one example calculation for every type of statistics you do. They want you to do that by hand. The reason for that is they want you to demonstrate that you know how to do all these different statistics. And so I'm going to walk you through an example problem for standard deviation. If you already know the statistic, you can fast forward this, you can go through it really quickly. Um, otherwise, I want you to work along with me. All right, so let's talk about standard deviation. Okay, so first thing that we have to do is think about this term deviation. So deviation just means how far from the normal. In this case, we have a population that fits a bell curve. It has a normal distribution. In the middle here is our mean. This is going to be the normal for our population. Deviation is going to tell us how far from that line a data point is. So let's say I had a data point right here. This little data point is going to be farther from this line than this little data point right here. Deviation is going to tell us that. Standard deviation gives it a specific amount. Standard deviation is going to tell us there's this space in the middle where 68% of our data falls. This direction is going to be plus 1 standard deviation. This direction is going to be minus 1 standard deviation. Before we go forward, I want to point out this really useful website, um, www.mathisfun.com, etc., etc. Um, this is a really great website to go to because they talk a lot about where the formulas for standard deviation comes from. So when we go to calculate standard deviation, that'll make a lot more sense. Okay, let's get into the formula. There's a couple different ways to write this formula. Let's start with this one. Let's define what it means, and we will go from there. All right, you're going to notice there's a lot of different letters here. Let's figure out what they all mean in this formula. First, this x, s sub x, that is going to be standard deviation. This is the symbol you'll see the most often um, if you're looking at the standard deviation of a sample, which is what we are always going to do. If you ever look at the standard deviation of a whole population, you'll see the Greek letter sigma looks sort of like a 6 on its side. Um, that just means standard deviation of a whole population if you ever see that. All right, let's look at our next variable to figure out. We have n right here. n is going to be equal to the number of measurements in your sample. Okay, we've got this lovely one right here, that guy that looks kind of like a funny E, that is going to be the sum of. We've got x little i right here, that is going to be the value you're looking at in the sample. We have x with a line over it, which is going to be the mean of the sample. Putting all of those things together, you're going to add a bunch of different numbers and eventually give you standard deviation. What I want to point out as well is this value right here. This means sum of, and up above it we have n, below it we have i equals 1. This is the number of things you're going to sum. So it asks you to add up from your first data point to the number of data points you have. That's all that thing means. So we could go forward just using this equation, but I actually think there's a way to rearrange this equation, which makes doing the math a little bit easier by hand. And so that's the version of this equation that I want you to use. So the version of this equation that I would like you to use is oops, standard deviation is going to be equal to the sum of x squared minus parentheses, that's important, sum of x parentheses squared over n all over n minus 1. Take the square root of that whole thing and that will give you standard deviation. 
all of these variables mean the same thing they did before. Sx, that's equal to standard deviation. This is equal to the sum of, sum of, our x's are just the values in our data set, and n is the number of values in that data set. Just the way this is arranged is going to make the process of calculating standard deviation just a little bit easier, in my opinion. To make any sense of this thing, we have to have a data set, so let's grab a data set and go forward with that. So this data set is about bean plants. Um, we've got this experiment using fertilizer on bean plants was performed. Germinated seeds were planted in sterile soil to which different amounts of a commercial fertilizer were added. Height of the plants was measured in centimeters 25 days after planting. Data recorded was bean plant height in centimeters. Notice there is uncertainty there, plus or minus 0.5 centimeters. That tells us that the smallest gradation in the tool they were using was probably one centimeter, and so that last decimal point is going to be their um, estimated decimal point. So let's zoom in here just on group A. Let's calculate standard deviation for just that one as an example, and then you can do the rest on your own. Let's remind ourselves of our equation, and we will go forward from there. This equation, we have sum of x squared we have to find, we have the sum of x then squared that we have to find, and we have n. So in this case, let's count up the number of data points that we have first. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So right down here under my work, I'm going to say that n in this case is equal to 10. Now I already know a couple of the different things that are going to go into my equation. Another thing I need to find is the sum of x. So here are my x values right here. If I find the sum of those things, I could put them right here. I literally just have to take 10 plus 7 plus 8 plus 7 plus 8 plus 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 9. If I add those things all up, I'm going to get 83. So now I know here my sum of x is 83. I also have the spot here where it wants the sum of x squared. Okay, very quickly, let's look at the difference between the sum of x squared and the sum of x then squared. Notice these parentheses make an incredibly large difference, whether or not you add something up first or second. This one also needs the sum of x squared. So in this other column, this is going to be where I find x squared. I just need to square every one of these. So 10 squared, I've got 100. 7 squared, I've got 49. 8 squared, I've got 64. I just find the squared value of each one of those and add each one of those up. If I do that, I get 701. That is going to be my x squared value. Next, we just need to put this into our equation and solve for it. So I like to write this whole thing out. sx that I'm trying to find is all going to be under the square root, but my sum of x squared, that was 701. My sum of x then squared, okay, so my sum of x was 83 then squared, divided by n, my n was 10, whole thing over 10 minus 1. Then I literally just have to put this in my calculator and solve for it. Order of operations here, though, is very important, and so I like to put this in my calculator in a couple of different steps. The first thing that I like to do is take this 83 squared value and put that in my calculator. If I take 83 times 83, I get 6,889. Then I like to pause at that point, clear my calculator, and write out my equation one more time. Next I see I can take that 6,889 divided by 10. I can do that in my calculator as well. I like to do that, then I like to clear the calculator, write it down one more time. This is just to really help me with order of operations. 
So almost ready to calculate here. I can take 10 minus 1. I know that's 9. So I can put everything under the square root into my calculator and have one last step before I solve this whole thing. All right, last thing I have to do is put that final thing in my calculator, take the square root, and I end up with 1.1595. But all these extra decimal points, I don't want to add all of those because I'm faking uncertainty. And so I have to round to the same amount of uncertainty that I had. So it was plus or minus 0.5, so I can't go any higher than that. So I'm going to say it's 1.2. If you're really good with order of operations, then you don't have to break it down into all of these different steps that I did. But I really like to do it this way because parentheses just mess up my calculator and I can't communicate it unless I break it down into these little tiny steps. So if we go back all the way up here to where we have these different values, I can now put in my standard deviation that I have 1.2. There's also this space up here for mean. To find mean, I can just take the sum of all these values, divide it by 10. So my mean is going to be 8.3. That means that 68% of my data is within a range. The range that it's in is if I had this as my normal curve. Here in the middle is the value 8.3. If I go up a standard deviation, then the plus 1 standard deviation is going to be 8.3 plus 1.2. So I end up with 9.5. If I go down a standard deviation, then I am going to have 8.3 minus 1.2, which is 7.1. I know 68% of my data is between 7.1 and 9.5. When I do my error bars, that's going to be the top and the bottom of my error bars. So see if you can do that with the rest of this data. You should be able to do it with group B, group C, group D, same process. I would get in the habit of writing out all of your different steps. These are going to be the steps that you want to include in your data analysis section where you prove to me, to IB, to any readers reading your lab that you understand the math behind standard deviation. All right, so once we have that standard deviation, we can turn it into this graph. Notice right here, there's that mean that I found on that last slide, 8.3. And up here, here's my upper standard deviation, here's my lower standard deviation. So it's telling you 68% of the data is somewhere in this space. Next thing that I can try to do is try to figure out, is there any difference between each one of these groups? So if I look just at mean, it might look like some of these things are different. But they're all pretty darn close. One way that I can tell if things are probably different is to see if the standard deviations overlap. If they do, then it's likely it's not significant difference. If they don't overlap, it's likely that it is a significant difference. There's one other thing that I can do to test that though, and that is to use a t-test. A t-test is like a more accurate way to tell if something like these two data sets, group A and group D, are different enough to count. We will never have to calculate t-test. Instead, we're going to use this website called www.graphpad.com backslash quickcalcs. That's how we will calculate our t-test if you do it in any of your labs, but we have to know how to read it and what it means. And so in order to do that, there's a couple more vocab words that we need. Okay, so the vocab words that we first need is something called degrees of freedom. To me, it sounds like kind of an exciting term, but the way that you find degrees of freedom is not that exciting. It's just going to be the number of data points, n, in a data set, minus 1. It's going to be that way for each data set. So you're going to have n1 plus n2 minus 2. 
That is your degrees of freedom. If I wanted to find degrees of freedom comparing um, group B and the control, they both had a sample size of 10, and so I'd have 10 plus 10 minus 2. That would, of course, give me 18. That would be my degrees of freedom. I'm going to use that degrees of freedom with a t value. I'm going to use those things together to look on a chart and find a p value, and then p will tell us significance. So for this example, let's say t is equal to 0 0.60, and our degrees of freedom is 18. Okay, so we have to go up to this chart. The way you use this chart is degrees of freedom is over here on this side. So I know the degrees of freedom I'm going to use in this case is 18. So I'm going to look somewhere in this row right here. That's the row that I'm going to look at. And I'm going to look to try to find which thing is the closest to 0 0.60. So I look through here and I say, okay, so if I start on this side, 3.92, that's pretty far from 0.6. If I look here, 0.69, I know that's closer to 0.6. And 0.6 is, in fact, going to be a little bit that direction of 0.69. I'm going to take this value, I'm going to read down to the bottom, and there's going to be a p-value. This p-value is going to be what tells us whether or not something is significantly different. In this case, my p-value is 0.50. What that means is this thing is not even close to significantly different. By convention, there's no reason other than convention, 0 0.05 or less is what we call significant. That means there's only a 5% chance that all the variation you see is because of randomness. There's a 95% chance that it's because of whatever thing that you're actually looking at. The data we had in this example, it's a 50% chance that all that variation we see is just totally random. Because that's high, such a high percentage that it's just totally random, it means that those two data sets, they aren't different. Even though their mean is different, there's so much variation that those data sets don't show any differences. All those differences are just totally random, not because of something going on. So if I came back down here to see is the difference between the two groups significant, I'm going to say no, it's not significant because the p-value is equal to about 0.5, which means there is a 50% chance all the variation is because of random variation. These two things aren't different because it's all random. So that's the gist of how to do a t-test. I know using this chart can be a little confusing and what a t-test actually means can be even more confusing. Um, please ask me as many questions as you need to in order to really understand this. To quiz yourself, there's a couple more questions down here. I'd like you to finish all the questions on this worksheet. You'll turn this in to me. Just want you to make sure that you understand how to do all of these different things. Thanks for bearing with me through all this math stuff. You guys are great. See you later.